What is up, everyone? Welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls 2. If you're wondering why I'm lighting this torch up in such a well-lit area, well, you see the windmill over here can be put to the torch. It can be burned down. And the windmill is part of a mechanism that fills up the next boss's, uh, Mytha's room with poison. If you burn the windmill, her room is no longer going to be flooded with poison, which turns an unwieldy, super hard fight into kind of what I'm assuming is going to be a breeze, no pun intended. Also, uh, it might pay to stick around and make sure the windmill has fully burned before you go off and uh, continue your adventure. Just making sure the charred remains of this windmill is no longer spinning. I think the gears are supposed to keep turning, uh, but yeah, I, I'm not actually sure if anything else is going to dramatically change uh, without poison flooding her room. Uh, the only times I've done this fight have both been with the poison, so I'm assuming it's going to be way easier. I'm going to assume that. I'm going to assume that she doesn't gain some crazy-ass new attacks or anything like that. Uh, if she does, well... We're in for a learning experience. Oh, no, no, no. Don't like that. Don't like that, Mr. Mannequin. So the first time through here, I totally missed uh, that these wooden gates, these wooden guardrails are totally breakable, and I couldn't find Gilligan over here for like an hour. Shush. You idiot. Stay quiet. I'm on the run. Don't give me away. You're a fugitive too, eh? Yeah? Why else would you be here? It's got death written all over it. You want to climb down here? I can lend you a ladder. But, um... <laughs> how much can you offer me? Why, yep! I'm trying to help you, you know. Have you no gratitude? Downright rude, really. I, I, I've, got, I've got a soft heart, so... I, I let you off. This once. All right. It'll be just a moment. Go on ahead. Will do. I think the only thing you get down here is... I want to say Twinkling Titanite, but my recollection of what items have been in what locations has been... Oh, and a Pharaoh's Lockstone. So I was right that time, but generally my recollection has been really off this playthrough. Uh, probably because I have way less experience with Dark 2 compared to the first game. Okay, he doesn't really have anything new to say. Also, oddly enough, I wasn't getting sound when he when I spoke to him just now. Huh. Oh, and some spice. Yeah, I did I totally didn't realize those guardrails were breakable my first time through here, and I could not find Gilligan. I knew he was down here because somebody had told me that there was an alternate way to access the pit in Majula other than the way I took in this playthrough. Uh, and my first playthrough, which was to use the silver cat ring. Oh, Jesus, forgot about the pyromancy. It scared the shit out of me. Uh, but I do believe that Gilligan is actually the intended way of accessing that pit. Uh, when you exhaust his dialogue, he moves to Majula right by the lip of the pit. And he sells you uh, multiple types of ladders. Well, we meet again. There's treasure this way, but I have a bad feeling about it. I don't quite have the guts myself. <laughs> All right. So I'm trying to remember, uh, because it's uh, the doorway in the room that Pate is in is locked, so 
you're actually kind of circumnavigating this area, and eventually you'll find your way to the other side of the doorway, back to Pate, but it's locked from uh, Pate's side. So the way he's talking about where that he has a bad feeling about and that there is treasure behind, you actually have to kind of go out of your way to get to. But that's fine because these, yeah, the entire room, uh, the entire level is pretty dangerous. Though we have mitigated a ton of the danger just in the boss fight room itself by burning that windmill. Uh, that is a mimic. Is it? Oh, I'm so doubting myself now. No, it's not. God damn it. I'm gonna call every chest a mimic and be wrong about all of them. That's so dangerous, too. <laughs> because you not only have to worry about chests being mimics, you have to worry about them being other types of traps. It's evil as hell. Ah, mannequin. What's up there, buddy? What's up there, body? Uh, did these urns have the... No, they don't. I think they poison, though. I think I saw a little bit of a green fluid splash out. I was just, I was more worried that they were going to contain, uh, that corrosive acid. Yeah, we don't need guardrails around here. This place isn't even sanctioned by OSHA. If it was, the amount of complaints about this place would be through the roof. What do we got? Oh, great heavy soul arrow. That will come in handy for the magic build that I'm not making. And this is the doorway back to Pete. Ah, shit, I am poisoned. Yeah, they do contain poison. Oh, well. Got plenty of moss well, left over. Good to see that you survived. Perhaps you're more rugged than I thought. In any case, the treasure is yours, since you went ahead and took the leap. I prefer a more cautious approach. It's hard to know who to even trust these days. For instance, I've heard that a man is out for my life. Now, what misunderstanding could have ever led to that? The poor bloke must have quite an imagination. <laughs> you be careful too, my friend, for trust can be a dangerous thing. You be careful too. So what we've learned about Pate there is that somebody is out for his life. And if he is, the new patch is, well, you can see why. But to us, Pate has been nothing but trustworthy. Although he did say trust can be a dangerous quality. But he has warned us two times now about impending danger and he's been pretty fair. Ooh, Lightning Spear. Where are you, my friend? Let's see. Lightning, lightning, lightning. Lightning. I actually can't even remember if lightning... Yeah, lightning is still an infusion. Yeah. But I do not see the spear. I do not see it. I want to find this because I would love to have a, a spear that I can actually use with my fairly low dexterity uh, for a couple of things that are coming up. Spear would make that excellent. It's got to be here somewhere. Um, I see a spear down here. Is that it? No. None of these are spears. Um, I'm not going to waste any more time looking for it. Uh, let's progress with the level, and I will search my inventory more thoroughly uh, sometime off-camera when it's not going to take up 20 minutes. Boom. Oh. Uh, I wasn't looking at my health. It sounded like he got a hit off, though. Probably because of the slow swing speed of the Crypt Black Sword. No problem, though. So those enemies, uh, the mannequins that we've been fighting, their corpses are strewn all over here. The boss of this level, Mytha, ripped the faces off of those enemies and turned them, turned them into lifeless puppets. 
It's a good segue to talk more about Mytha, actually, who we're coming up on pretty soon. Mytha was a queen who was obsessed with getting the king's attention, and I assume that king is the Iron King, because Mytha's soul doesn't actually specify which king. Uh, but this does, this whole series of areas does fall within the Iron King's domain. She wanted his attention so bad that she poisoned herself. She ingested so many types of poisons uh, that this cocktail of poison transformed her. And consequently, she was also obsessed with her own beauty. So she tore the faces off of her servants so they couldn't gaze upon her. Presumably because she became monstrous and hideously disformed. So I suppose she tore the faces off of her servants so they couldn't gaze upon how far she had fallen as far as, like, her beauty had gone, uh, goes. Also, I'm not really sure what the Grave Wardens are doing here in this level. Don't really understand how they're connected. Because the Grave Wardens are supposed to guard the Undead Crypt, so what they're doing here, I have no clue. Oh, something else I just remembered about Mytha. I was looking at her loot table. There's a cool little connection with the covered, the covetous silver serpent ring. You get the uh, the plus two version of that ring from Mytha herself on New Game Plus or by burning a bonfire aesthetic. The ring's description mentions the serpent-like god of greed. I think his name is like Xandro or Zendroe or something. I'm wondering if it's related to the Mimic God, mentioned uh, in the item description for the Symbol of Avarice, the Mimic Helmet from the first game. Sounds like something I should put my Sherlock Holmes hat on for, and uh, investigate that a little bit more at some point. It seems like a pretty reasonable connection. Uh, gotta be careful in this room, because although I do have poison cures, yeah. And never mind, actually. I'll just put up with the poison. I really like this series of levels because you get a real sense of an ongoing story being told uh, between each one. And each subsequent level, uh, from beginning with the uh, the Huntsman's Cops and ending with, at the end of the Iron Keep, Every level builds on what's being told in uh, this self-contained storyline. Like, it's like uh, the Huntsman's Cops and the Undead Purgatory sets up a few plot threads, but you can see it's a little bit weaker there, and then you learn more about the Harvest Valley and the Poison and the Covetous Demon's obsession over Mytha, and you start getting more about the, uh, the Iron King and the Queen. And you learn in this level why the poison is such a significant theme, and you learn more about the king and Mytha, and her own unrequited, uh, unrequited love like covetous demons. And then next level you get more on the king himself, and the fall of his kingdom, and the history of this land, which is all really nice and self-contained. Alright, this phantom, I'm not gonna let him get the better of me. Then shh. No, god, I am! I lied! <laughs> no! Oh, I've let, like, every red phantom, uh, black phantom get the better of me. Oh, wait! Good, good, I see the opening. Now, let my stamina cover. Okay, we are good to go. I wonder if that thing functions like a Shotel. Shotel? 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 Hmm. Oh, we get some nice armor. Uh, not great, but it's, uh, it comes pre-upgraded, so not bad. The other thing I really like about this and, uh, uh, Harvest Valley in particular, in these series of levels, uh, I really like the atmosphere here. It's really strong, especially, like, especially the, uh, the, the Harvest Valley. It's just overcast and utterly inhospitable. Also, hidden bonfire down here. I like it. I like it a whole lot. Strong atmosphere. Fun, cool boss designs. Uh, nice variety in like the styles of the boss fights. Uh, the it, the enemies heal here all feel pretty dangerous. Get a nice foreboding sense out of these couple of levels. 
Might be one of my favorite stretches of the game here, come to think of it. Never really given it too much thought because the game's still so new. What the fuck? I think there was something stuck in the wall that was freaking out. Shades of Havoc physics. I welcome that. Alright, so this fight should go pretty smoothly because I've drained the poison uh, at the start of the episode by burning that windmill. So, make this go a little bit smoother. I coat my uh, nice little greatsword in good old golden pine resin. Yeah. Get some lightning enchantment going. And let's do it. Man, did I get cocky. I went in thinking that turning the poison off would turn this into a cakewalk. Because again, I've only fought her with the poison and that is an untenable hellish fight. Uh, with the poison flooding the room and constantly being poisoned while the, all this is going on. I did not expect to still get killed with a poison free room. Uh, but I will say that her grab still sucks to get hit by, poison or not. Yeah, don't take her that lightly. Should go way smoother this time, though. Another thing you could do, uh, I, I'm obviously not going to do it because I don't like letting summons uh, take the reins or really interfere with boss fights when I'm trying to show them off for the first time. There is an NPC who you can summon right outside of Mytha's door. Goes by the name of Jester Thomas, who is basically Jester Tarkus. Uh, he can solo this boss, much like Tarkus in that golem. It's nowhere near as fun to watch, but still pretty impressive. Uh, he can... I sh will append that statement. He can solo her with the poison on. <laughs> Uh, I think you can also summon him for one other boss. I want to say Prowling Magus, but I'm not sure. So let's see, as long as I don't get poisoned, this should go pretty okay. Um, her range is massive. Oh god, I did get grabbed. I think I have enough HP to survive. Yeah, there's no follow-up hit. Yeah, I need to do a better job of reading when she's about to do that. Let's see. Those three ranged hits uh, can be a little bit dicey. Uh, they drain more stamina than you might think. Take the opportunity to take a swig. Oh! Rolled through the first hit. The follow-up with the tail swipe is a son of a bitch. Alright, now that that's out of the way, get Mytha's soul, and we can keep- oh. Yeah, I kind of ran past the Grave Wardens to get to the refight. Don't want to go the wrong way. Alright, now we can take the elevator on up to the Iron Keep. Yeah, it is up. I, I wasn't sure for a second there, because I thought it was a constant descent down there. Now, what do I want? Ah, the Gurm Great Shield, because it has 100% fire resistance, which is going to come in handy for the next boss fight, which is against the Smelter Demon. Uh, and I want to maintain my roll speed. Alright. So, it looks like it's all good. So, we're going to rest here. Get prepared to go through the Iron Keep. Next time, we should be fighting Smelter Demon, and then maybe if I, if that doesn't take too long, might be going after the Iron King in the next episode as well, and we will be done with the Iron Keep by the time that fight is finished. So for now, thanks for watching everyone, take it easy, have a good one.